Clean and Green. That's the name of a program focused on fighting blight in Flint and Genesee County. TV5's James Felton reports the nearly 20 year old program is getting more support than ever, with dozens of groups helping maintain thousands of vacant properties. It feels really, really good because so many residents want to be a part of this program. Raynetta Speed talking about the Clean and Green program. The Community Relations Manager for the Genesee County Land Bank told us how the program works. The participants help us to manage our vacant lots properties and they do that by mowing and removing uh, blight. 66 groups have pledged to maintain 3,600 vacant properties across Flint and Genesee County. Speed tells us each property will get a visit every three weeks from now through September, something that makes residents in these neighborhoods happy. They're very appreciative. We hear that all the time. And Speed tells us maintaining some of these properties in Genesee County is a challenge, something we saw firsthand. Why don't you take it to the dump? to the legal dump, do it right, and help keep the city of Flint looking good. A question Robert Allen has for whoever left this mess at a lot on Tilden Street in Flint. Allen is a leader of one of the clean and green groups. He says this area was clear until last weekend, but Allen isn't giving up. This is the same neighborhood where my children grew up at back in the day. Allen and others like him will try their best to fight blight. Even though we do our part, they still going to do what they try to do to get up in here. And we're going to keep doing what we're doing to try to keep them out of here. For her part, Speed just wants everyone to be good citizens and take care of their trash. It's great to find so many committed people, but it's horrible to find that there's so many people that are showing disrespect to the neighborhoods and to the people that are doing this work. Reporting in Flint, James Felton, WNEM, TV5. The 2023 Clean and Green program is supported through grant funding from the Ruth Mott Foundation, the Michigan Youth Violence Prevention Center, and the Michigan State Housing Development Authority through its Hardest Hit Fund.